Of course, pause the video, take a moment to reread the question a couple of times before getting started. In part A, we are asked to find the amplitude of the oscillations. Now, amplitude is symbolized by x sub m. So this is what we're looking for in part A. It turns out that it's going to be useful to first find the angular frequency, which is symbolized by the Greek letter omega. And this, of course, is equal to the square root of the spring constant divided by the mass. Now, we were told that the spring constant has a value of 100 newtons per meter and that the mass is 2 kilograms. If we punch this in our calculators, we can see that the angular frequency is about 7.07, .07, and this turns out to be in radians per second. That's a result that we're going to want to hold on to for just a moment. Now, let's consider a couple of equations from simple harmonic oscillators. So the first equation gives us the velocity of the simple harmonic oscillator in terms of the angular frequency, amplitude, the time, and then the phase constant. And the second equation gives us the position based on the same sort of values. It's going to turn out to be useful for us to divide these two equations. This is a little bit of algebraic maneuvering, but it will serve our purpose. If we divide the two equations, we're going to have v divided by x equals. Now, look carefully when you divide the amplitudes here and here would equal 1 when you divide them. So they essentially cancel each other out, leaving you with negative times the angular frequency. And then look carefully, you can see sine is dividing by cosine. And a nice trigonometric identity tells us that sine over cosine is tangent of this value right here, omega t plus the phase constant. Now the question gives us several values that we can plug in at this point. If we go back and look carefully, we can see that we have the position x, we have the velocity v, and then we have the time t. So we're going to be plugging all three of those values into our current equation. So we've gone ahead and we've plugged in the velocity, the position, the angular frequency twice, along with the given time. The only thing that we don't know is this phase constant, and it will be useful to us to solve for that. If we divide the terms on the left-hand side, we're going to get about 26.47. We'll omit units for clarity's sake for now. The left side, we have negative 7.07 times the tangent of this quantity. Multiplying 7.07 .07 times one second there remains 7.07. .07. Next, we will divide both sides by negative 7.07 .07, so that these would cancel. On the right side, on the left side, you'll get about negative 3.74. This will equal the tangent of this quantity. Next, in order to cancel out the tangent, you actually must take the inverse tangent on both sides of the equation. On the right-hand side, the inverse tangent and the tangent will cancel out. On the left-hand side, you're going to get negative 1.31. Note that you must have your calculator in radian mode in order to get the proper value. Finally, subtracting 7.07 .07 from both sides of this equation will yield the phase constant. And it turns out to be approximately negative 8.38. Now, again, this is a value that we're going to want to hold on to. Let's come back up and look at one of our two equations from before. Let's take the position equation. We're going to grab this and copy it down below, and we're going to use this finally to get the amplitude. Now, remember that x was 0.129 meters. This will equal the amplitude times the cosine of our angular frequency times one second plus our phase constant which was negative 8.38. Having your calculator still in radian mode, you want to type this entire expression in. And when you do that, you will get about 0.258. So now you have 0.129 meters equals xm times 0.258. Go ahead and divide both sides of the equation by 0.258. 
And when you do that, you will get your amplitude at approximately 0.5 meters. This is the correct answer to part A of the question. Part B, if we look all the way back here, wants the position, which is x, at a time of 0 seconds. So once again, we're going to examine the position equation. We'll paste it in right back here. This time, however, the time is 0 seconds. So we'll have x equals our amplitude of 0.5 meters times the cosine of the angular frequency, 7.07 .07 radians per second, multiplied by 0 seconds, plus the phase constant of negative 8.38. That is not a good 3. And that's actually in radians. Keep your calculator in radian mode, please, for all these calculations. And when you punch this into your calculator, you're going to get negative 0.25 as your answer. And that will come out in meters. So this is the correct answer to part B. And then for part C, we need the velocity at time zero. So let's paste in the velocity equation and simply plug in the known values. So we have negative angular frequency, 7.07 .07 radians per second, times the amplitude of 0.5 meters, multiplied by sine of 7.07 .07 radians per second times 0 seconds plus the phase constant of negative 8.38 radians. Pick up the calculator one more time and when you punch this all in you are going to get approximately 3.06 and because this is velocity it will all work out to meters per second. 